Okay, we're in the greenhouse tonight and it's because I need to prepare most of my little seedlings for the kind of frost that we're going to have tonight. The temperature, the temperature should drop down to about 34 degrees, but I don't trust that it won't drop down lower. It, it probably won't, but just in case, I want to be able to prepare my plants because not a lot of these seedlings or these plants are cold hardy, period. Greenhouses are great and they retain and get a really hot during the day, but all of their heat is lost at night if you don't have a heat source inside. This greenhouse is run completely off solar and that's it. I have no means of heating this during the day and I just have enough solar really for lights and for some other small stuff throughout the day. Nothing really to keep the inside of here clean, uh, nothing really to keep in the inside of here warm during the night. So what we really need to do is somehow protect our plants from the frost because if it's cold enough outside it will still get cold inside of here. Some of the elements are protected from like cold rain or even a cold wind but anything else if the temperature drops below 32 it will very likely drop below 32 in here. So things like tomatoes really really need to be protected. Some other plants that still aren't winter hardy but slightly better than something like a tomato can last in here. Even something like a cucumber will do a little bit better, but when it comes to tomatoes specifically and things like tomatoes, we really got to protect them even though we're inside of a greenhouse. So this year I come into this with a little bit more planning and even though you may not have had planning like I did, hopefully if you are in a greenhouse, this may help you try to keep some of your plants warm, understanding some of the stuff that uh, I'm going to share with you. Now I've heard of people using giant jugs of water inside of their greenhouse overnight to help it stay warm because essentially what they say is that these giant jugs of water maintain their heat and that has a radiant heat throughout the throughout the night but I've seen really conflicting evidence on that and I don't really have the space to put a giant jug inside of the greenhouse or space that I want to lose to a giant jug and when I say jug maybe I mean like a 50 gallon 50 gallon drum kind of like what you see behind me this this blue one uh, but I don't want that inside of here and I've seen a lot of conflicting evidence on whether that actually works throughout the night because although the water might not change it's not radiant enough especially in a space like this to maintain a lot of that heat and then disperse it into the greenhouse but something that does retain heat and is really good at maintaining a consistent level and is I can use to my benefit and that's the ground itself. So the ground likes to stay at a consistent temperature unless the temperature is below 32 for an extended period of time that ground will then freeze as it goes down. But in these late winter early spring nights when we're just dealing with very quick frost at night and then it goes back up to the 50s, 60s or even 70s during the day the ground never has time to cool down enough to where it stays cool. So the ground will generally stay consistently around 40 to 50 degrees. So we're going to use that to our advantage in here. I put these raised beds inside of the greenhouse for two reasons. One, the soil underneath this was not very good and I wanted raised beds in here. Two, I knew that with a raised space, with soil, I can use that to my advantage on these cold nights. Now because I have built up raised beds and soil and mulch on the outside, equaling up to the, the height of those raised beds, technically the inside space inside of the floor is below ground level. So it should maintain a warmer temperature staying more consistent at night. The closer you are to the ground, the warmer it's going to get and the higher up the colder it's going to get. Now, during the day, a greenhouse works in the opposite. The hottest la layer is going to be the top because the ground layer has maintained that same consistent temperature or has tried to maintain a consistent temperature in the day, cooling down the ground and all the heat rises and gets trapped in the top. So with that explanation, let me show you what I have set up in the greenhouse. And hopefully, even though you may not have ground level like I have, you might be able to keep your plants warm with some of the other tricks that I uh, have acquired. So now you can see we're down below ground level. Below these boxes, I have another one on this side. And for added support, I also have this raised bed that uh, doesn't have any use right now. 
so I use it as a box to bring into the greenhouse just during the night so that I can lay blankets over it. This helps keep everything in, keeps all the warmth in, and on the nights that I really need extra heat, just in case, just if I was extra worried, I could put in here a growing heat mat or even a chicken heat plate from one of my chickens. Anything to add just a little bit more warmth so that it can keep this area, you know, just maintaining heat throughout the night. Uh, this, having these set up this way has really helped keep our plants warm and not die because we have in the past, our very first year growing inside of this greenhouse, we would try to throw blankets over it or frost blankets. We kept them up on our growing racks that we have just up here. And the problem that I had is that for one, they were lifted up off the ground. Uh, two, I didn't have these raised beds to help maintain heat in here or help main a con maintain a consistent ground level. And I also put wood chips inside of this greenhouse to help keep heat inside of here. Everything I could do to help keep a little bit of heat in here I did without bringing in big buckets of water. The good thing about these heat plates or heat mats is because it's just a coil running on the inside of them, the chance of a heat fire is basically none. And the other thing that is really beneficial about them is that if you're running a situation like mine where it's green, where it's uh, off of solar, then these only run about 12 to 15 watts, meaning that I can run it reliably throughout the night on the charger up battery and have no problems at all, even on a smaller solar generator. Uh, the heat lamps, on the other hand, that come that are for brooder lamps, if you're familiar with uh, raising chickens, those run off of about 70 watts, which would only give me about two to four hours on my system. So it's not ideal. Uh, these, however, will run, I think it's 15 hours. So I have plenty of time through these cold snaps to run something that's about 15 watts. And if you have no electricity at all, not even a solar panel, solar generator, anything, uh, a good idea for heating up a box like this or even something underneath a blanket is they make these, they're called hot water bottles. It's a silicone, it looks like a, a jug that you'd almost drink out of. It's all silicone and you pour hot water into there. I'd suggest buying a few of those because they maintain their heat for a, for an extended period of time. Put a few of those under some blankets in a situation like this and it should keep your it should stay warm the rest of the night. I've never done it, but we do have one of those for under our blankets uh, in the house or we traveled with them and we would use them in very cold nights in very cold places and those stay warm pretty much throughout the night. So if you had two or three of those in a situation like this, I'm pretty sure it would help maintain underneath this, especially if you have blankets under here, I'm pretty sure it would help maintain the heat very consistently throughout the night. So what you're protecting for, especially in a lot of these plants like tomatoes, is the tops getting frozen. And the that's one, that's one thing. So you can protect against the tops getting frozen. Sometimes it's a way well, you could do that on very brisk nights just by covering them with cling film, saran wrap, whatever you want to call it, the plastic covering. We don't like to use that too much, but I'd rather use it than my plants die. And then the other thing is keep the soil itself from freezing up, depending on how cold it is inside of your greenhouse or how cold that cold snap is. You really want to make sure that the soil itself doesn't harden up because that will kill the roots of some of the plants that are going in here. So this really will, especially because we're lower on because we're lower inside of this little under let's call it underground area and we're going to be putting blankets and a heat source inside of there the plants themselves and the soil themselves will release their heat but slowly so a lot of that heat especially with a blanket is going to get maintained inside of here and a little side note i put my least cold hardy plants 
for at least my setup because I have them next to the raised beds. I keep my least cold hardy plants next to the wall that the soil is next to because that's going to be the warmest wall. I will also keep them in between some of the other plants because the other help plants will help insulate them from any damage. So most cold hardy, we're going to call them cold hardy because most of these are not cold hardy, but the, the ones that will do best when it comes to the cold on the outsides, the least cold hardy like tomatoes will be on the insides. And the other thing that we really have to protect for inside of this greenhouse is our citrus trees. We have smaller citrus trees that at the moment we can protect this way. But what I'm doing is taking a five gallon bucket and covering the tops of the trees with the bucket. This should help keep the tops, all the green parts from getting any type of frost damage because the heat from the soil itself radiates inside of the bucket and it helps keep it warm. And it should help a lot of, it's like wearing a beanie. It should help keep a lot of that soil from losing its heat out and dispersing up into the air, but help kind of radiate it and help manage its temperature itself. But these plants are still small enough to have inside of the greenhouse. If I was having them any bigger and still had them inside of the greenhouse, I would do something like a trash bag, a big trash bag. And then if it got cold enough, I would try to do something where there was at least some sort of heat source inside of there. So I would use my solar panel, my solar battery, plug in some sort of light that's running, I don't know, close to 15 watts if, if that, and put it underneath that trash bag, hoping that it keeps that radiant heat throughout the night. Now, by the end of this, if you're not growing in a greenhouse, but you watch this anyway, you might be wondering, why don't we just grow them in our house in the first place and not have to deal with all this? Well, I don't like to deal with all the heat mats and I have a lot more space inside of the greenhouse for growing. The heat mats get a consistent temperature for germination. Some plants like tomatoes and peppers will only germinate at around 70 to 80 degrees. A lot of that may be hard to achieve inside of your house where there's minimal light, especially. That can be solved with inside of a greenhouse. Inside the greenhouse, it gets to be almost 90 degrees, close to that, depending on the day. Especially if it's 60 degrees, it could be 30 degrees hotter inside of the greenhouse uh, during, during the day if, it, if there's no clouds. That is enough for our plants to germinate and we don't need any plant, we don't need any heat plates. So there's a trade-off and that is for these nighttime things. We have more space, but we lose when it comes to protecting our plants at night. So that's why we have extra measures to protect the plants in the nighttime when we can have the extra space to grow during the day. We do soil blocking and when we're soil blocking, we use these trays. A lot of people use tin trays in soil blocking or they'll use these plastic trays. And because we're using these trays, while the seeds, while the plants are small enough, we're able to sandwich these things together, which will keep warmth in and also allow me to stack my plants inside of a setup like this so that I could fit more plants inside of this little makeshift board cover <laughs> blanket thing um, and keep my plants a lot safer. I think this is gonna, especially covering them like this, is going to help even more when it comes to retaining their heat because that's what I'm trying to get all the plants to do is retain their heat throughout the night. And anything that's in its dormancy stage that I'm trying to propagate and take root, kind of like this little fig, I don't have to worry about. This can sit here and grow and doesn't matter to me at all. It can sit right here and it'll be just fine. Thanks for watching all the way to this point. Hopefully this helped you. And uh, if you're curious about any of our seed blocking, because uh, this is our first year doing it, and we're really excited about it, uh, go ahead and check out our other video that we just posted last week about it. Have a nice night and uh, good luck on your growing season.